Hello in the name of Christ, how are you doing? It's it's Karavo. It's your girl Crane Kang. Kikara Zizi. Whatever. Okay. Hello in the name of Christ. It's Karabo. It's Crane Kang. Kara Zizi. Whatever. Don't know if you heard that. Um my silence detector is becoming quite the thorn in my flesh. But it's a thorn and a messenger from Satan. So we can't remove it. Cause it's the only silence detector I have. It keeps removing my words. I wanna hide the doogie. Anyway guys, um, what's up? Sorry, I'm uncomfortable. Had to go Milano keep it so happy, but whatever that's done. Let's move on. Alrighty, uh, okay, I don't know why this is doing this. Um, guys, you know, filler words, um, um. I'm just so big about those, but I don't have software to remove them. And sometimes the software removes words I just, like, absolutely need. Anywho, <laughs> I just want you to understand my cough. The state of my situation in my body, the sickness, <laughs> that's where I'm at. Uh, the, the, the tightness of my chest is not there anymore. I can breathe now. <laughs> I coughed like a monster and I really didn't quite appreciate that, but I'm kind of hoping that was because uh, I was getting better. Physically, I feel better. Um, the headache is mild, but it goes. And it appears the... Um, the cough syrup helps with it. So I did not quite expect that. I don't have grandpa, I don't have anything else to deal with the headache. So I just like, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful that I am a little bit better. In that regard, as you can hear my nose, I'm still kind of nasally, but not too bad. When I talk, I still sound like I'm twanging. Anyway, whatever, that's fine but i'm no longer breathing out of nothing but my mouth so that's good we can use the nose amen so basically my little theory from two or three days ago is accurate it's true i am getting better um i i feel like this is the end of the road for this cough this flu whatever it is it's going it's gone it's just a matter of now the phlegm out of my chest just getting out it has to like find a way to get out and it's getting out through me coughing it out and it's disgusting but whatever it is what it is all that matters is that i don't feel sick that i'm not vomiting that i am basically okay ish am i healthy enough to go back to exercise i don't know we'll see the weather today is kind of like glum it's all murky and rainy outside and i'm like hmm I don't know, I might just take today off, or the rest of the week, it's like Thursday right now, so I might as well just go back next week, I don't know, but you know, making excuses sometimes can hurt you, but I also don't want to exacerbate the situation, like just when I think I'm cool, next thing I ever, like I go right back to where it is that I started, and this time around it comes back with a vengeance, because it's like bacteria that's decided to become like a super bug. You know, so maybe I'll just skip the exercise. Uh, yeah, guys, that's how my sickness is progressing. I'm better. I, I bet you can tell and you can see on my face that I'm better. Speaking of my face of wench, y'all, Jesus is, is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Is that basic? I've been crying and crying and crying about my acne and I was like, I don't care anymore because this is the story of my life and... Like, whatever, if you just want to go and wreak havoc on my face and make me like a pizza dough face, do you? Because at this point, I'm getting an incorruptible body. And then there was like a table that suddenly turned on Saturday or something. Where it is the next thing I'm looking all like, great, I don't know. Okay, uh, I, I just like, I don't know, like a table is turning. Remember those pills that I bought, um, that I keep taking? Mmm, well, that's Dash. Is, is apparently allegedly starting to <laughs> yeah I was I was I was feeling sad about it because I was still getting new breakouts and all that jazz but now guys um I mean come on go dark again I'm still getting not getting sorry I still have all this hyper <laughs> this hyper pigmentation on Sunday I went to Chinatown and whatnot to buy tampons and what have you from some this one store that sells things cheaper uh, than what you would get at the disc game. and I got like a whole 32 pack of super tampons for 40 bucks I bet ladies be trying to flood over there now it's a little it's, so it's like you know uh, an understood and a loved brand uh, type thing 
and that store when i was there looking at their facial products not that i was trying to buy anything i was trying to find a cheap hyaluronic acid uh yeah dr dre or ashal dr dr you dr whatever some product guy okay yeah uh the lady one of the ladies there that works at the store was like kurazi Kura, well she didn't exactly call me kurazi first it was like i was busy scraping off a label off this one product yasel tone that was only 50 rands that said that it's a spot control and it had all these like i couldn't see the ingredients because there was like a label just on top of the ingredients list and i was trying to scrape the label off to see the ingredients and she was like ma'am you're gonna have to buy it i was like what because of the label so we had like a whole it wasn't an altercation but an exchange where i was like i did not open this thing i did not crack open the seal i just scraped the label off to read the ingredients why are you putting the label on the ingredients list because i have got to make an informed decision to purchase um what do you call this this or not you know i told you guys that uh this lady in the house that wants to call herself my mom decided to give me 500 rands so i that's how i was able to buy what do you call this pills not pills like that recommendation from this cam remember i went to this cam and that some time ago i went to this cam and some lady where saw my skin and was like sister girl what are you taking for your skin i was like oh life sucks and then she recommended some discam product that is dealing that's like a hormone balancer or whatever and i've been taking those pills and i still was getting acne but not as much so i was like i guess i'm just gonna have to deal with always getting acne just not as much well this month around i got that same product and it was like cheaper like what marked down good discam for whatever reason so i was kind of blessed even though i'm really struggling financially uh type thing whatever blah blah moving on getting to another point so i go to this chinatown to buy cheap tampons because tampons are important every month i'm still a woman that bleeds mm. and this lady sees me scraping off a label because i want to read the ingredients list because you know moisturizers i ran out of everything yeah type thing so i wanted something to moisturize my face that might just also help combat topically my acne because we've got acne issues so i'm scraping the label i'm scraping the label and then she's like you're gonna have to buy it you know how china like yeah you break it you bought it there are stores that just like rules you know who mm, there. anyway and then we had like a whole exchange she was scared of her boss blah 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 it was a cordial conversation we weren't arguing but i was basically telling her what if i decide not to buy it because i don't know what the ingredients are in here i ultimately found the ingredients and they're not bad there was like lactic acid and all these things blah 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 and during the the exchange with this lady i was like look i've got bad skin and i can't just buy anything and put it on me because you know like as you can see we've got challenges on the face lady you know i can't just buy anything and this thing claims to be a spot control so come on like what's going on anyway whatever ultimately the issue was eradicated and i was told whatever you get to get away with murder this time i was like yo the way you run the store needs to chill anyway after some moments the lady comes back to me she's like well i mean since you're struggling with like acne a uh, type setup thing uh, why don't you buy this like this this particular product of ours uh, you know a lot of people buy it and they claim that it has like basically bust a cap in the knee of their acne i was like you don't have bad skin um so how would you know if you've never tested it she's like i can just tell i i trust it and it flies off the shelves by people who struggle with like this morning i put this many of this product on here and already there's only like four left because it's that good i was like huh anyway whatever some little pink thingy my bobby for 65 bucks i'll show it to you some other day if at all it actually truly works and ever since i started like so that was like on sunday that this activity happened right um you all know that i got sick already like friday saturday so that's not where i caught my disease all right this was on sunday i told you this disease was brought into my body by some supernatural insanity anyway whatever so i'm like at the store and at this point my yeah like proper like life is hard so i find this like 65 rand el cheapo funny thing and it's good it's a no-name brand little moisturizer and i'm like yo i as the uksupega whatever so i'm like i look at this lady and then the holy spirit wells up in me the lady at this cam you know the lady at this cam who saw my skin and i was like ma'am what are you using for your face 
and then she recommended some hyper like expensive uh, hormone controlling 30 day pack thing and it's expensive for me because i don't have money okay uh and i bought it anyway because i realized that i was suffering and i had just recently prayed to god to clear my skin and so i imagined this lady from Discam as a a blessing in disguise or a blessing not so much in disguise it was broad daylight blessing so i bought a very expensive product and i neglected all the other things that i needed to buy this thing because really my skin problem is that problematic uh, this would mean if it worked it would mean I would never need a dermatologist I would never need to go see a doctor and so spend all that money uh, and if this woman makes a decision to basically maintain giving me 500 meager bucks I could keep buying this thing and that's like 250 but that would mean everything else that I need I'm gonna have to either not get or try and find cheap alternatives for it that's why I was at the Chinatown uh, because I was trying to find cheap um, what is this tampons I almost said condoms my goodness you know sexual abuse that's all up in my dreams and my visions yeah that's what's good it's just popping through anyway whatever uh, like it's making me walk in Freudian slips that don't make sense for a woman that is, is chaste in Christ I was looking for cheap tampons uh, a cheap alternative to basically all the things that I get at Discam. Yeah, I, I go, I drive all the way there, but there's a Cash 22 because it guzzles more gas because it's all the way out there. But it's a one-off trip, and I pro prosper to get like a five-month supply of tampons because I only go through like five or ten of those every month. That's what's good. Uh, especially when they're giant and super so I got those those I, 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 got, I went there for the tampons and for um, painkillers around my period <coughs> um, cheaper than what I would find at this game because I get some pretty bad pains around my period <coughs> <laughs> Sorry, you see I'm getting better. Whatever. <laughs> and I uh, was also looking, I'm running out of like um, retinol and hyaluronic acid and uh, and vitamin C, which I use in the mornings. And I, ha I prefer the vitamin C and the retinol because it has improved the texture of my skin and reduced my pores, even though it has done absolutely nothing for my acne. So I don't want to throw that away. I want something that's going to combat the acne while I can still use retinol and vitamin C, right? And that's why I haven't gone back to benzoyl peroxide because every time I'm on benzoyl peroxide, my pores yawn like a baby in the morning when it's just waking up. And I don't like that. The tightness of my pores is just better. So if I can deal with my acne while using retinol and vitamin C, respectively, so I was looking for hyaluronic acid, I was looking for retinol, and I was looking for vitamin C, cheap. Uh, go, go this chem, not this chem, go this place, right? Uh, this Chinatown place that sells all these like products online. I try to buy them off take a lot, but there's a delivery fee of 70 bucks if you're, um, if you're thinking about bobbies, if your whole purchase is underneath a certain amount of money, there's no free delivery. So I was like, 70 rand is like a million rands in my life. Okay, I gotta like, yeah, find a way around this. So that's why I went to China, because I was looking for retinol, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, and I was also looking for tampons, like a bulk buy type thing that's basically that's all i was looking for because i did not have enough money i'd already gone to the disc camp to buy that product which is usually 250 bucks but it was 199 rands because they had marked it down so hallelujah amen so i got that and some cinnamon because i love cinnamon right um and i need cinnamon like gritty it's just like my chocolate okay and i was left with like 230 like proper 230 bucks and i have gotten out to buy retinol vitamin c and uh, and uh, what do you call this thing a moisturizer i've got to buy tampons yeah all that jazz and painkillers which i ended up not getting by the way for my period taking for granted that maybe i might just happen upon grandpa that belongs to my mom if my my my, my pain if my tam if my period gets too ridiculous when it does come which is not currently i will hustle grandpa from from my mom's stash I ended up having to choose, pick and choose, because I'm broke. Mm. And I'm getting somewhere with this story because wickedness, like relax, make like a chill pill and a flower, it's not gonna get very far. So I walk in the store and I'm, I tend to be there for like a very long time because I'm literally like price comparing and reading labels so that I don't put like nasty stuff on my face because I already got like some issues anyway whatever right so i'm in the store finally now that you have the context and uh yeah i tend to go to that store to buy brand labels that are very very expensive at a discount or clicks but this place is like marked down type thing so stuff i know and the products that i buy on take a lot um they sell them at that place but like for cheaper 
and it's a walk-in store that does not require delivery fees or whatever so i was there looking for hyaluronic acid the one that i use and yeah blah blah vitamin c retinol for the same prices that i would get them on take a lot but without the delivery fee and tampons of course so i'll go there and i find all the other th things i need i ended up buying like i keep every time i buy retinol and vitamin c i buy a different brand or a different make because they it, it just interchanges the stuff that i'm looking for i sometimes don't find it because it's not consistently stocked so i have to find another version so so far it has worked out for me the last retinol and the last vitamin c that i was working was by pai May. And now, what is this, Dr. Dre Ashman, you know, this this um, doctor in the, his products, like, yeah, come on, you understand what I'm talking about if you have tried to bark and hunt <laughs> for actives online. His, uh, like, um, little stash of uh, products actually works really well. I've loved his hyaluronic acid, so I told myself that I'm, I, I will buy his hyaluronic acid at that place. I, I didn't find it. Not, not the one that I bought on Take A Lot. Take a lot as like an online store, just in case you were wondering. <coughs> <coughs> oh goodness, um, my. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm clearing. Anyway, whatever. Cool, so I buy the stuff. That's what's good. No, I don't buy the stuff. I'm chilling there. Can't find retinol. Can't find vitamin C. The the one that I bought on Take a Lot. Like batung. Okay, so now I've got like gotta get different vitamin C. I was also not happy with Pi May's vitamin C, and I will explain to you why right now. South Africa has this thing that it does and I don't understand what's going on because frankly it is very invasive we understand that we've got Muslims living among us but we also have Jews and we have Christians we have Mormons we have Jehovah's Witnesses we have atheists we've got a, a country that has got freedom of religion all over the general ecosystem do you understand so you don't get to lamb based people at grocery stores all over the show islam right now i'm quite upset with it because they have declared a global jihad on the world because of this war in israel with hamas has declared global e jihad across the world basically warning the earth that it, like you better attack jews wherever they're at on the earth we got issues right we ain't feeling it none of that and i'm a christian and so i will always stand with israel and while growing up in a country where I, I, I was cool peoples with Muslims all over the show, I ain't cool with their religion being shoved down my throat. Like, proper, I've never been Muslim, neither have I ever been interested in being Muslim. So just in the same way that South Africa constitutionally has said everybody gets to be what they want to be, do you? You don't get to just sell us products. You don't get to just ally with freaking, like, Simba. You don't get to ally with uh fmcg manufacturers of meat you don't get to ally with hard knock well-known global brands and then just bah, lamp paste everybody with halal food like you just don't get to do that and i don't know why the south african government has allowed this insanity if you want your food halal manufacture it yourself or come up with stores that are specifically halal there is actually a store uh, in my neighborhood not very far over here that sells halal meat only and muslims are always buying there and anybody else at all that wants to uh, basically basically compromise their religious views a christian walking into that store is just sinning against god very honestly and overtly so because that is food sacrifice to idols and if you think about balaam's era in the book of revelation and also in the book of jude and in the old testament uh, balaam's era is to cause god's people to sin by one practicing sexual immorality and secondly eating food sacrificed to idols so when christians happen upon this passage of scripture and it convicts them of sin they've got a responsibility to avoid halal food like all of it they've got a responsibility to avoid halal food however there are people who ignorantly do this and when they ignorantly do it i believe i think it's one or two corinthians covers them where the lord basically says that or oh, is it romans uh, you you argue about eating this and that in so far as your conscience is clear when you're eating something you're good to go but when your conscience is not clear and something is actually sitting uncomfortably on you then you're not good to go so once a christian happens upon the understanding that eating halal food is eating food sacrificed to idols that's when their conscience is not clear and so they gotta actively avoid it 
Meaning that when you live in a country that will lamp paste you with entire pizza houses that are like all of their pizzas are Deben, uh, no, no, like Debonese for instance. It's an Indian shop, fine, but Christians should avoid Debonese unless all they're buying from Debonese is Coca Cola or a Fanta orange, right? But when, when something is, is halal, it's basically food that has been prayed over, that has been prepared in a particular way so as to honor Allah. It's just wrong. And for Christians, all right? Muslims do you. So, however, Christians have got a prerogative and an incentive to avoid like restaurants like Debonese but unfortunately in South Africa you will find halal food like Kowulis food packaged uh, right next to the vegan label right next to the vegetarian label there's also like that whole halal sign and it's just so ubiquitous there's just so much of it all over the show that it's like we can't even escape as South Africans food that we used to love and eat and really quite frankly it was our favorite like crisps back in the day and back in the day they were cool they were it was just my zimba that's it now they've got bah, halal on them it's like there's no escaping it so essentially south africa has been taken over by islam even though it is apparently a christian nation it has been taken over by islam uh, islam what is this a uh, food uh, is regulated in every country just as ours and somehow this religious infringement managed to worm its way into south african ubiquitous food provision for people that are non um muslim and we all are have got to eat, eat food prayed to, to over by Muslims to their God that they belong to that the rest of us don't unleash to and it is an infringement on our human rights to make our food basically of a particular religion largely you should leave it alone like yeah indeed label the food kosher if it must be kosher but food can't be both kosher and halal and in South Africa they somehow are trying to trick people into believing that meat can be both kosher and halal I'm sorry no servant can serve two masters or rather just neutral so that's just this like problem going on in the country where our food is just being slipped in under the cracks under the rag and whatnot in a Muslim capacity and I ain't feeling it and it's not just now food that that it first started with food where everywhere you were going everything you buy it was now halal that's why eating out at restaurants for me has become problematic but I don't have money so I guess whatever it works out so too is just going walking into a, a restaurant what is this in what into like a Woolies or whatever to buy groceries now you gotta like scan your food items all over the show to make sure that you don't put anything in your grocery cart that is halal and some of the, your most favorite foods for crying out loud have now been made halal they've been made halal they weren't originally that way like 10 15 years ago but now they are so now you're restricting my diet what's going on mm. so i kept but when i bought these products that i may online go take a lot i found out that they're halal that the product like you know how this vegan uh, face products um made from nothing but plant-based ingredients um and i mean i can buy vegan products i don't care type thing but when you're like messing with my spiritual convictions now it's like what's going on and it was only after i bought this vitamin c and this retinol yeah pai mei that i realized that all of the brands all of the products that pai mei are halal and i'm like my tongue so i'm putting stuff on my face right now that's what's going on that's been prayed to prayed over uh, to a foreign god a false god that i don't recognize neither respect so i'm basically now just sinning against god because my conscience is afflicted but i'm broke i'm poor may grace abound ever more so because i'm not about to throw out that vitamin c i'm not about to throw out that retinol but i have conviction so ever since happening upon the recognition of that halal retinol retinol i have um been uneasy so I sort of kind of wanted to change brands uh, even though I was comfortable with the retinol and the vitamin C yep I made purely for religious reasons and there was a time when I wasn't even all that mad but now with this war in Israel I'm just like as in boycott much I, I'm not trying to stand with with Islam I'm not trying to support anything Muslim at this point because they are butchering God's people and they are making war with a global citizenship that did not have it coming because they're violent and I'm not trying to go out like that this um you, you this whole massacre of Israel happened uh, Saturday right Shabbat that's what's good this was now Sunday and I was like good riddance 
I even felt in my spirit when I happened upon the alternative doctor's products that good riddance, like good riddance, because I'm not trying to put face creams on my face where they, there is like a whole global apocalypse by Islam on the earth where they are trying to divide the earth and cause more war than we already have endured so I'm taking like a stand that's what's good but one thing I definitely don't understand in South Africa is why the country has bent over to the like what is this golden calf that is Islam it has literally bent over to Islam to a point where Christians are squeezed in a corner uh, Jews are squeezed in a corner Moors, Mormon, every other religion is squeezed in a corner because rarely ever are you going to get lamb basted with kosher food when you go to the grocery store barely ever are you going to get lamp basted? I don't know what other religion has got a special brand when it comes to their food, but Christianity, not so much. You just gotta make sure that the food has been prepared a particular, not prepared a particular way, sorry, but that it's not sacrificed to idols. Uh, really ever will you go to like pick and pay and pick up something that has been prayed over Gagari ancestors. Indeed, when you go to Umukete from your family, where they've got like a whole family gathering to celebrate the ancestors and they cut up a chicken and they pray to their false gods as christians we have a responsibility to avoid that but that's in your own yard and you know for a fact that hey, you're a christian so don't be eating but then when you go to a grocery store to pick and pay and then next thing you'll happen upon ba traditionally prayed over mbamba is so like proper mbamba vele vele by 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 they prayed over by tanda zele for to the ancestors vele vele and so more pussy mbamba proper you've got problems do you understand if you're a christian you're, you're you've got issues just go and buy good old-fashioned beer if anything how about you just don't drink because that might just turn you into a drunk heart but you are not gonna find ancestral worship lamb basting the living daylights out of you prayed over food at like a woolies you're not gonna find that you're not gonna find that at a pick and pay at a spa you're not gonna find it so south africa which is a black government and so largely it stands with ancestral worship they even are hypocrites against their own ancestral worship by forcing ancestral worshippers to worship Allah by eating that food like Wangumundu has just got their religious rights afflicted that's the issue with a lukewarm country uh, that is it is literally tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine and so even in their legislation they can't regard one god or they can't regard a set like they can't even what is this legislate in a way that is fair to everybody South Africa has been taken over the food industry and now it appears as well cosmetics by Islam I ain't feeling that hi Thai May I don't think is a South African brand all right I think it's international so I guess I should have been more careful to buy a product that was made in I don't know where uh, is it India or is it um okay I think it's bang yeah India that's what's good so maybe I should have been a little bit more careful when it comes to buying products from from India type setup thing Hemara still I, I feel them basted by the fact that almost every like Doritos for me like Doritos are for me just like Doritos are an American brand guys are they not they are they're an American brand when did they become halal when America has been a Christian nation for a minute they're falling off the bandwagon now we get it but the fact that Doritos are halal there's a day when I bought Doritos some time ago because they get let's the those spicy chutney ones they're blue that package that's a package that's a uh, container whatever little bag a blue sister just grabbed these my bobbies and as i'm busy eating these doritos i see this halal sign at the bottom of my doritos and i'm like since when since when maybe it's been like maybe a decade too but i'm pretty sure that uh, doritos were not from like the og doritos though the old school doritos were not always halal they can't be they couldn't have been because they're from america for crying out loud so manja we gotta go looking at every packet of mazimba looking at every and besides i also wonder if doritos in the u.s is now also halal like proper because now must i ship doritos from america to make sure that i don't eat them yes then muslims leave us alone i just feel as if though ain't nobody out here massacring you for your religion so why are you massacring everybody you're causing your own islamophobia is that basic everybody try to forget and forgive and be better after 9 11 after you lamp basted the us of a uh, the, the the way you were mistreated at airports and all that jazz and everybody searching you up just because you're wearing your hijabs and whatnot yeah that was unfair and everybody was educated and trained to understand that you don't get to do that to people come on not everybody is rough and violent as a muslim and then you go and you export across the planet stealthily we like literally slithering into 
our governments to force us to eat the food that is sacrificed to idols we are as christians supposed to go and spread the gospel and make disciples of all nations that's what's good but we are not supposed to force people to become disciples of all nations we don't shove our food every down everybody's throat we don't force people to take up the gospel but you guys do and yet you claim you're the religion of peace kifilanga receives and deserves to just stop the global jihad that has been declared on us all by your particular religion i just feel as if the muslims that are apparently allegedly not violent it's now time for you guys to wake up and realize that your religion doesn't make sense why because your little hamas people that you are marching and rioting in the center of new york city in order to support uh, uh carrying the palestinian flag are burning babies and they are beheading babies at what point are you going to wake up to realize that that is not a religion that ought to be followed they're burning abandona and they like proper beheading babies that's what's going on and you're still trying to justify that that's okay right is right and wrong is wrong you need to wonder if your god is really truly god and everywhere where you're also super concentrated in the earth like in the middle east over there your countries are violent there uh, there's always anti-government protests protests going on a lack of peace and you are constantly encircled by desert land clearly the lord has not given you fertility in terms of your lands to bring forth fruit it is no wonder you are so jealous of israel you want us to consume it whole and take it over because it is the only country in the middle east that is not suffering from blizzards of desert wind and lack of fruit being brought forth that means that your god all throughout the ages has somehow struggled to bring rain to your lands to make it fertile ground how is israel which is right there slap bang in the center of the middle east the only green land in all of the middle east how's that even okay why are y'all all deserts except for israel why do you not see why are you not realizing that that is not god that you are serving and that you celebrate after israel because it is a fertile land amidst one that is with amidst other countries around that are in in desert mode perpetually in heat mode perpetually and also when jerusalem brought forth fruit when it became as abundant with green as it presently is right now hooking up the best olives in the game it happened from 1943 48 basically when they reoccupied their land that's when they started to shoot forth fruit it means that there is a causal co collection connection a, co a causally um, related connection to the people of God being in the land and being restored to being a nation that then caused the one true God to give green to that land while the rest of y'all remained past to a point where you're trying to now destroy them i'm literally just trying to appeal to muslims at this point to make them realize oh to you as a person especially the women like I, for me it's the muslim women the way that your religion is so uncaring of you as women the way that they are so forceful of you like literally these chauvinistic misogynistic random men in your religion will not let you breathe they won't let you enjoy your beauty in some parts of the world you can't even wear makeup they are perpetually putting a whole bunch of material on your body to cover all of the the glory that God gave you and on top of that there is no uh what is this uh, there is no in your particular scriptures your quran whatever you want to call it there is nothing expressly by your god uh, commanding men to love you commanding men to love you to treat you good to treat you well to not insist on taking 10,000 wives whereas we in the scriptures as women even though the lord commands us to respect husbands he also makes it clear that if you do not listen to your wives if you don't listen to your wives your prayers will be hindered our god protects women's rights and he also insists that men love us as christ loved the church and if at all they don't love us the way that he loves the church their prayers just hit a brick wall and ceiling so they are met with misfortune because of mistreating us if you think about what happened to sarah in the old testament how it is that her husband was irresponsible and essentially kind of misogynistic and left her to get taken over by abimelech and pharaoh the lord plagued abimelech and pharaoh until they had to let sarah go that's how god intervenes on behalf of christian women on behalf of the jews prior to christ coming right now they've rejected their messiah but the lord is going to go back and get them that's what's good so even when we suffer from misogyny the tyranny of chauvinism as women and men insisting on lording it over us with an iron fist we have got scriptures in the bible that protect us and god actively punishes men who mistreat us he actively punishes them but you guys are just standard you're struck you are stuck you are literally held hostage i mean think about what happened in afghanistan when the taliban took women out of universities some of the men there this is then also an argument towards men in the islamic religion who also realized that this is unfair against women proper some of your girls were taken out of school and you went and you protested and you put placards up on some no let the women continue to study their medical degrees let the women finish but then you couldn't help because the taliban dragged them out of their exciting sharia law that's what's good so even some of the men 
cannot go to the Quran to help the leaders, the authorities in their states to understand that, come on, we need to let women breathe. So, frankly, for me, the best thing a Muslim woman can do is convert to Christianity in order to truly be able to live out the fullness of their lives because the scriptures protect Christian women. As if, though, that's not enough on its own to help Muslim uh, Muslims understand that their God is not really God because he does not care for women. He is not egalitarian. He does not cover the, the, the sorrow of a iron fist of misogyny of men over women. If you think about what the Bible says in, in the book of Genesis, what was the judgment on Eve and what was the judgment on Adam? The judgment judgment on Eve was that she is going to desire her husband from now on your desire will be for your husband the judgment on Adam was that he will try and load it over the wife with an iron fist and work by the sweat of his brow right so essentially it is indwelt in us all those who have fallen under Adam to by men in particular they will uh, always want to uh, uh, afflict us with the heavy hard knock gavel authority and we will want and long for them to a point of embracing random rubbish like um, polygamy random rubbish like you you don't work you can't uh, make your own money and so when a man just kind of slaps you it is what it is you just take it you accept miss being a mistress you accept being cheated on as wives you take so much nonsense as women because that is our judgment but the lord under the second adam commands adam to not abuse his authority there is no such protection under islam for women so i just feel as if though like muslim women have got so much of an inf incentive to convert over to Christianity because that's the best place where they will be guaranteed protections under their religion. Plus, we don't force anybody to convert. Whereas in your religions, there is a lot of coercion and even when you want to really obey and honor your Allah, you still are subjugated to the tyranny of a very misogynistic religion, a very chauvinistic religion that when you're living in 2023, you can't even raise your voice to complain. You can't even raise your voice to complain. And now it is, the, now here it is, that your religion is chopping up babies. As women, you are nurturers. As women, you tend to be a lot more sensitive towards the emotional climate of an ecosystem, even when men feel like it's a necessary evil. So how many women are cringing right now at the burning of Jewish babies that are Islamic? How many women are cringing right now at the rape? Look at what your men are doing, like proper, they are raping, raping. How in the world do you as a woman, never mind whatever religion it is that you stand for how how do you just uh, cheer on and stand on a rooftop and embrace and accept a man that can put his manhood in a woman by in a woman by force i'm sorry i don't even have to be christian to loathe rape i don't have to be a, a leashed or tied to any religion at all to resent rape as a woman it is i personally am a, a victim of sexual abuse a victim of sexual harassment i have been sought after by all different kinds of witchcraft spells by wicked men that wanted to have me by force i can't stand sexual perversion in men and some of the men that are trying to do this to me are claiming themselves as christians they're using witchcraft to try and infiltrate their way into my life i'm forever being assaulted sexually in my dreams by men who are using witchcraft spells in order to try and force me to marry them something that happens with you guys by the way where men just rock up to your mother's house and for a couple of like pennies a little bit of money they can just grab you as a 12 year old and marry you they can just grab you as a 15 year old and marry you like child brides are a whole problem in the middle east and then on top of that there is an issue with rape where once you have been raped there's no recourse under the law you literally cannot get any redemption under the law under your own sharia law because apparently a man was entitled that's what's good to your body and he could get it being ravished or being raped is a problem in the sight of God. He considers it an abomination and a sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amnon raped Tamar and that story rose up by God's own standards. A whole plague, a sword that slapped David's household. David raped Tanamont raped Bathsheba and the sword never left his household because of that sexual sin, that aggression against a woman. There is no protection or recourse under Islam when something like that happens. And right now, Jewish women are being raped by your men who are claiming to be doing this in the name of Allah, which is another thing that also made me wonder. Does not Allah uh, expect, do you understand, sexual immorality to flee out the window? Just like in Christianity, sex before marriage is wrong. So how in the world is Allah content with your men having sex outside of marriage with women that are not their wives in broad daylight, publicly raping them and then showing it on shows on social media? You are going against your own law in the name of who has, what is this, uh, said in his own word, in his own Quran, that sex before marriage is wrong. I know that in Dubai, in, 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 the, um, in the United Arab Emirates, yeah, that sex before marriage is wrong because of Islamic law because of Islamic law. So how do you justify scripturally or according to whatever is your word, whatever you call the passages in the Quran, how do you justify men raping women? 
I can understand holding them hostage. Maybe that's just your, you know, uh, the the cause, like stick, sticking to jihad, whatnot. But how do you go against the law to fulfill your God's desires? It's just too much hypocrisy over there. And like I said, two women who are Muslims, how can you still stand with Hamas and what has happened when they can rape women and display such footage on social media alongside kill babies? They are violating the world and cursing even your convictions. But you got to stand back. Some of the men of which that have raped women then went and slept with their actual wives actual wives how would you feel as a woman when your man goes and rapes another woman and then comes back and caresses you and you consent to that sex would you not feel betrayed and cheated on and would you not think your man is a monster but that's just the thing about women in islam you can't complain you just gotta watch these guys be barbarians all over the show and do nothing is it not yet an incentive for muslims to turn to christ why do you not see that this is not a religion anyway whatever let's move past that point i don't quite appreciate having halal food shoved down my throat because i'm not muslim and south africa is a country that has bowed down to the very violent god of islam because they're scared that if they don't make a whole bunch of our food maybe 30 percent to 50 percent of it halal that muslims might just complain and slap us with jihad our country is cowardly and so now we are having to, if at all, we are vigilant about Jesus at all. Look at every last thing that we buy at the Woolies uh, to make sure that we're not busy buying food that is sacrificed to idols. This was not even trying, I was not even trying to have a conversation. Islam right now, but I'm quite upset with what's going on in the world. And some of the people that are busy protesting in New York and in London are women. And I don't understand how under heaven you can stand for such violence as women it means that your conscience has been seared your love has grown cold and the thing that makes you a woman you have forgotten about it and you also are happy to disregard whatever under heaven is the violation like, like you are a whole political activist i don't understand how you can dwell in the same body being a political activist as a woman right that is standing up for the rights of your country because you are very religiously kind of tied to your nation and with that activistic edge knack that you have inside you not resent the way that you as a woman are being treated by your religion how are you a political activist and yet unable to gauge that the thing that you are standing for is the very thing that's making your life and the life of your future children, your daughters, your sisters, a near on impossibility? I, I just don't get it. But anyway, do you? It's a good thing I'm sitting ensconced in a shack in South Africa where nobody's even coming for me. Nobody's even caring about me because then the likelihood that I might just be jihaded by a Muslim is very low. But what needs to be understood is that what's going on in the world right now ought cause some Muslims to really just take stock. When you witness footage especially on uncensored sites like Twitter of babies being burned and beheadings happening when you are finding in some black uh, underground market um, social media platform such footage and the kidnap of women that you can tell are not coming back in one whole piece and you're an Islamic woman and you're still carrying that Palestinian flag what are you doing like what are you doing Nenzantoni, you're the most coercive religion on the earth. Like the most coercive, the most coercive religion on the earth. You as a person, if you love your own human rights and you want to be able to make your own decisions because you feel afflicted when somebody's just shoving stuff down your throat, how in the world can you belong to a religion that is trying to force that its evangelistic flair, the thing that spreads its own message to the world is forceful. It is take it or leave it. It is burn it down or it must all convert to Islam when you are literally forcing people to convert i mean your god is not a loving pursuer then on that day is he he's not doting around you and giving you an option to choose him he is saying take me or leave me and last time i checked when somebody's saying take me or leave me and by fear you then end up taking him you don't love him you are passive aggressive and at any opportunity awarded you at all you would definitely flee if at all you could escape this kidnapper you would leave so a lot of the people i believe even in the middle east that are sitting there are sticking to islam out of fear and they look and those that are sitting i mean like in, in, in afghanistan for instance when christians there converts they evangelize a lot of the response by the people on the ground is not so much violence but fear on some dude what are you doing how in the world how dare like how can you like evangelize and preach the gospel where you're facing death this is dangerous stop doing this thing so it's not a violent muslim man that's saying to a christian convert that you're gonna die i'm gonna kill you and i'm going to report you to the taliban uh, the, the, the the majority of the response is whoa how, how could you just risk your life like that before they kill you i won't tell anybody but please just don't do this thing i have never for the life of me experienced any such thing whenever i would speak to somebody about christ 
in the street in South Africa where people are like, whoa, what are you doing? How could you like, oh my goodness, I, I promise I won't tell anybody, but be careful because next time somebody might actually report you into the Taliban. When that is your religion, when, when people in your ecosystem are warning you to like not do something and they're shaking, shaking, this is a forceful, coercive, random, non-loving religion. It can not be sustained. You are causing Islamophobia unto yourselves across the world. You wanted to recover from it, but now with this thing that you're doing, you're causing everybody to be like, I'm sorry, these people cannot be, cannot be reasoned with because they're violent. Everybody else is sending out gospel tracts. Everybody else is knocking door to door, annoying some people like the Jehovah's Witness but ain't nobody walking up with a panga trying to chop off your baby's head to force you to convert over to Islam or to give them a piece of the land. It's violent. And you are causing, like I said, your own Islamophobia. Even people that live in countries where there is no jihad. It's not that bad. The religious strivings in South Africa between Muslims and Christians and Jews, etc. You will end up just by looking at what's going on in the Middle East, developing an Islamophobia in and of yourself. You will be aggressed in your heart. And you will also wag your head at the brazen audacity of Muslims across the world celebrating rapings of women celebrating carnage celebrating killing children in their beds as they sleep and burning down their houses you will end up resenting them almost like you're living slap bang in the center of gaza as a jew or as a christian or even as an atheist that nonetheless got killed for the cause of islam i don't know i just feel as if though at this point my muslims you are you are what is this uh you're hypocrites especially when you're living in parts of the world where there is not so much violence by your people you would not like it if you were in palestine yourself there are palestinians that are literally subjugated to the tyranny of hamas and now they have to deal with rockets landing on their city and lack of peace as if though there wasn't already a problem with peace in their land mm, that's what's good because of some irresponsible hamas people like these hamasians whatever you want to call them have gone on right ahead and made a very uncomfortable life for palestinians in that region they have made life rough for them they have made children not be able to look forward to a future anymore whatever uh, attempts at peace or you know scaling down or whatever whatever it is that were the talks that were being done in this particular ecosystem now uh, people in palestine gotta find gotta, gotta move and also Think about what's going on in um in Gaza uh, right now, where people are trying to find safe passage out of Gaza. Egypt is and it doesn't want to take them, doesn't want to take Palestinians. The Israelis can move deeper into the like go into the, the center or the northern parts of Israel, the northern parts of Israel of which are not even safe anymore because Hezbollah is apparently threatening to nuke there. Lebanon is doing a strange thing. There's like basically a lack of peace everywhere because of what Hamas started because they're trusting everything every, everywhere. So now Palestinians who are living in Gaza are trying to find safe passage out because there's so much da 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 danger in that particular. A region and Egypt is, albeit being an is uh, what is this a nation that stands with these uh, has historically has stood with these other nations because of its peace deal with um, Israel of late won't take them and going into Palestine they could go there but they're entering into a much deeper more dangerous zone that's what's good because now Israel is about to lay them waste that's what's happening and well Israel it's like uh, I mean if you go deeper into Israel you're facing the threat of being looked at as an infidel by Islam when you run or you flee as a Palestinian into Israel so they're stuck in a rock and a hard place their own apparent military or army their own protectors have now put them in harm's way and children are now have got a, a, a mortality or a lifespan that they're looking at that has been severed by something like three quarters you're gonna go die at the age of 12 that's what's good because your people could not for the life of you protect you as children top of it they're busy raping women in public and making it look like it's okay when you as a wife happens upon a, a video of your husband humping a woman that does not belong to him and then comes home burping and you can't even complain all you can do is cry that your husband cheated on you and posted that rubbish on social media that's what muslim women are endured under and i'm pretty certain that there are also muslim men that are like this is nonsense how are you still sticking to that it's not god it is not god and evidence also of the fact that it's not god like i said earlier is the fact that your lands tend to be barren there is no peace there is no democracy there are always anti-government protests there's never ever been peace in the middle east because people who lack what is this um who, who are not under God will always be put under strivings if at all they are constantly attacking God's people. The Bible says that if a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he will make his enemies live at peace with him. Well, the people or uh, the surrounding nations around Israel have never been at peace with his people. And that's why the Lord has lain their lands destitute. That's why he's made them desert wastelands. That's why he has not allowed them to thrive economically. That's why he has this always, they, they, they're ravaged. They're living in dust, in deserts. How in the world is Israel the only country in the Middle East that's not a whole desert wasteland? 
Do you not see that that is God? That he has gone to war on behalf of his people for you. you, you they have made Jerusalem a cup of trembling. Everybody that has tried to heave it away have, has been surely cut into pieces. Everybody has, has been complaining about the Middle East in one way, form or another across the world. This is not how you take over a, a land. This is not how you take over a global citizenship. You know, you don't win people over with manure. You win them over with honey. And that is the reason why the world is developing grander um, resentment towards the whole religion that is Islam. Because no matter how much we try to recover from Islamophobia, there's always somebody bombing a new place, causing a new irritation. It, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's unsustainable. But anyway, I don't know why people are not drawing these conclusions. I don't know why Muslims are not realizing that even their lands have not been blessed with rain precisely because of their hatred of God's people be they Jew or Christian but anyway I need to go and use the bathroom and carry on telling my little story about my skincare so people can understand that just like uh, Islamic terrorism across the world so too is anybody coming up against the Christian hoping to annihilate them with a silly little flu or something of that nature naive you are in desert wastelands, you are living in an obviously cursed land that nonetheless wants the glory and the virtue and the beauty and the greenness and the bananas and the peaches, uh, oranges and apples alongside olives of a land that has been obviously blessed by God and you think you can strike it down? You think you can just strike it down and not have whoever made sure that those olives are harvested every single year gonna knock you out the way? He keeps them fat, he keeps them fed, he keeps them loved even though they have rejected the Messiah. That is how much God protects his promise to a people so of course you're gonna lust after their land in the same way that God keeps Christians fat he keeps us fed he keeps our lands green he keeps us basically in uh, survival we are evergreen even when people who are barren parched living in a desert wasteland eating straw constantly trying to break down the walls of people that are clearly protected from eternity past but you will be naive just like Hamas to go and massacre some children massacre some women massacre Holocaust survivors that one for me is the worst because they already went through so much and now they're going through it a second time again mm. without the Lord somehow laying you waste another time again like what for the 10,000th time you're gonna be defeated for the 10,000th time you you never learn le le lessons but I guess that's just the way that the devil is is it not he's an ancient spirit that never learns his lesson and so for those reasons he keeps on trying to lay waste people that the Lord has said you can't curse them for I have blessed them you can never lay them waste you might at maximum cause them to sneeze you might at a maximum cause them to get a cough a flu with nobody rocking up to rescue the day to send them to a doctor but you are not gonna prosper to actually truly successfully mow them to the ground until they're no more so you can just come and plunder them so you can come and loot so you can just come and take them and just for yourself there's a reason why I'm not married to a devil worshiper it is because every time one has tried God has knocked them out but not first before that guy trying to knock me out first and after I survive that's when they realize oh my goodness I'm living in an Arabic desert precisely because God will not give my land rain why because I'm evil don't know why people won't wake up and see that